They made a special wooden coil that is wound like a normal one with the two coils, with the two windings. It also has a regular coil wound around it. So if I just zoom in here, you can see I've got these windings here. Now these windings sit in the place of the uh, magnetic B field. We've measured the inductance of the B-field coil. Uh, that is measured at 10.2 millihenries. It has a resistance of 20, 27 ohms. Uh, the rodent coil components have, a, have an inductance of 0.2 millihenries and a resistance of 2.2 ohms. is connected to this um, 180 watt maximum output amplifier of UV. Bass and treble are set at max. And the volume you can see is about half, about halfway. So at channel 2 on the oscilloscope we're looking at the output of the amplifier. The coil is connected to the amplifier with the uh, two coils connected in parallel and then we'll be looking at the output of the B-field coil on the scope. The generator is based on a triple five timer, so it generates a nice and clean square wave. Then uh, the amplifier and the square wave generator are connected up to this bar here, which goes to our 12 volt battery here. The output of channel one here we're looking at is from the square wave generator, and that's set at 5 volts per vertical division and then channel 2 is the output of the amplifier and that is set at 1, uh, one volt per vertical division and then um, our time is 5 microseconds per division so we're looking at a frequency of around 80 kilohertz just like on the scope so that on channel 1 there is the output of the B field coil which as you can see is very different from the input waveform. We're looking at a, a pure sine wave at around uh, 15 volts. Now I'm going to lower the frequency and you'll see what happens to the voltage. As you can see the lower I go, also you can see the sine wave also is uneven. Um, oh. And another resonant point there, it would seem. So I'm going to go even lower, and you can see there are these different points where it jumps. If you look just to the left of the center of the screen, you can see that the wave is also acting a little funny there. So now I'll sweep, sweep the frequency upwards, and you'll see that at different points there are voltage spikes. And then you'll see at one particular one it goes quite high. So here I go, I'll turn the frequency up. So you can see the voltage already goes up a lot there, and that was quite something there. I'll go even further now, and now that I'm at the very top, it's gone small again, and the waves are slightly uneven. So go back down to that point that it was resonating at, where the voltage was really high. So now on channel one, we've turned the vertical divisions um, up to 20 volts per division. So I've just got it into this resonant frequency here, so you can see that the output you're looking at is around 60 volts. So I'll just turn the frequency down and you'll see that it's really fine point. So it drops a good bit there, then I go up, you can see how easy it is to jump past it. Just turning out, out it up the tiniest bit, and there we go, about there. And that's the highest output on the, on this coil here. We've lowered the frequency to around 8 kilohertz and you can see on channel 1 that's what's going into the rodent type coils so there's just a very short spike and then if you look at this the actual B field coil output you can see uh, that the voltage diminishes over time so you can see that it's, it's still resonating a bit at that frequency.